University. And we're on Twitch. We're supposed to start this last week. <laughs> we're doing it this week because whatevs. All right? Whatevs. So anyway, <laughs> here we are. Uh, probably going to take forever for people to show up because first time for everything, I guess, right? First time here. So got a couple toys I'm going to be opening. Let me show that. First off, I got, uh, this is actually kind of old, but I already have the SIF, but now I wanted the, uh, I bought the SIF separately for somebody for really super cheap. And, uh, but I really wanted this because the stories I'm going to be telling, I need a, a fancy Thor. So it's got this. I'm going to pop that puppy open. I also finally got my hands on the Hulk, the red Hulk. So I'm going to be popping that puppy open, seeing what we got inside there. I got my first ever pop figure. Oh, Stan Lee. That's right. I'm not going to make a habit of this. I'm I'm actually opening this guy up and putting him right here. And that's it. I'm, I don't plan on getting any more pops. Although I may consider getting a Cthulhu pop. Ah, no promises. I'm just saying in general. I've also got, for you Transformers buffs, got my hands on it. I was able to get the... The, uh, the Villains 2-pack. So I got uh, Thundercracker and Skywarp. I've already got... And this is the Earthrise one. So they actually transform into the Jets. Uh, not the... Because I already have them both for the Cybertronian transformations plus Starscream. And I have the Earthrise Starscream who transforms into um, a regular jet, also an Earth jet. And last but not least... Boom. And yes, I am a platinum member, so I actually get it cheaper. I actually get the, the cheaper price, not the more expensive price. I got Iron Man 2020. The exact day that they announced that they're going to be doing the uh, Silver Centurion armor also, which is cool because I have the 3.75 inch stuff, not the, uh, and they never made one this size, uh, at least not for the Marvel Legends, for the Toy Biz they did. Anyway, so those are the toys I'm going to be opening. Plus, I'm going to be uh, going over a couple of comic books too. I read this and didn't do a, a review on it. Uh, so that's Mars Attacks Red Sonia. I Wolverine 2020, part two of two. I read that. I'm going to be doing part three of three of Captain America Empire. That took a while to focus, but boom. The Avengers Empire, issue three of three. And finally, Daredevil Annual. Number one, well, 2020, but just basically Daredevil 2020. That's that's what is the, the annual for 2020. So there's those. Hey. Anyway, so I'm going to be reviewing those. And first, I want to say hi to the people in the chat. Uh, hey, Sue Ann. What's going on, Sue Ann? Howdy. Girl Talk is here. What's up for however long? We'll see. <laughs> I'm all right, all things considered. Uh, hey, Professor Comic Ramon, what's up? Professor Ben a while. Also, nice haircut. Thank you. It's Comic Book Universal. For, oh, Comic Book Universal. Comic Universal. What's up? Uh, it's good to be back. Things kept coming off, and now it must have been a month since I saw this awesome show. Right? What's going on, dude? What's going on? Um, yeah. Uh, freaking say hi, like on Facebook or something like that, or at least on Twitter, so we could talk and say what's up. Anyway, um, also. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about the uh, the Chadwick Boseman situation. Um, yeah, Chadwick Boseman died, and it sucks. It sucks when we lose a good person, and he was. He was exactly that. He was a good person. And he represented more than just being a good person. Like, he represented other good people. Um, geez, he, he, he played uh, – the first time I ever saw him was in uh, – I got Daryl Strawberry in my mind, but it's not Daryl Strawberry. Um, uh, Jackie Robinson. So he was Jackie Robinson, uh, which is the first, what was that, number 42, I think? I forget. But he was in that movie. He played Jackie Robinson, who was the first black uh, baseball player to be promoted from the minor leagues to the major leagues. And it was a hugely controversial thing. And it was after the time of Babe Ruth. You know what I'm saying? So like racism. Not as long ago as we'd like to say that it was, you know, like the really, really, really open, overt racism. So, yeah, it, it was there. Anyway, he played Jackie Robinson. He played a couple of really great roles before, you know. 
Uh, and he played probably one of the most amazing roles ever in the form of Black Panther, which just, it, 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 it did more, I think, for communities than most other black centric movies. Like this was as amazing as possible. And he was a huge part of that. And it's one of those things where clearly they're going to keep on making the movies and they're going to have to replace him. I guess they're going to have to bring Shuri to the point of being black Panther sooner rather than later, but they're going to, they're going to have to replace him. You know what I'm saying? Cause the movies are like, the movies are more important than any one person, but it's going to be one of those things where it's like in your heart, you're like, how can the movies go on without him? Ah, man, like that final scene in uh, um, Endgame just means so much more now, doesn't it? Like, damn, that really genuinely sucked. And he loved those movies. He loved what he was doing, his role in those movies. He loved it, you know? And all the people who used to make fun of his neck you know, over the past five, six months or something like that, I bet you they're real embarrassed right now, aren't they? Because as it turns out, he had colon cancer and his neck was skinny like that and his face was sunken like that because he's going through chemo. I never made fun of the guy once. I'm not here to make fun of anybody who's making fun of him. I'm not calling out any names. I'm saying they know who they are and hopefully they remember some of that stuff because, yeah. So here's here's one of the things I do want to talk about. I've actually been getting a lot of flack from people for not posting Wakanda forever or Bozeman and like whatever, or, or putting out a tweet or I just put out a, um, I did a, uh, a comic book review of two packs of comic books that I just got in um, actually a week ago, but I didn't want to touch them because they're in cardboard boxes. I didn't want to touch them for at least three days. So uh, yesterday I actually did the thing before I even knew that Chadwick Bozeman was dead, but uh, there were people who, you know, commented, oh, n- not a word about Chadwick Boseman. Some of them were actually, you know, good comments. They were literally like asking like, you know, hey, you know, Chadwick Boseman died and stuff like that. But, you know, like no word about Chadwick Boseman. Like, like it's expected. One, I did the videos before I found out that he died. Two, even if I knew that he had died, I wouldn't have said anything. You know, saying I might, maybe, maybe, maybe I might've said something like, you know, and uh, especially if it was a Black Panther comic book, it would just been like, you know, oh man. And I think we have to get some more Black Panther comic books just because, you know what I'm saying? Like hearts out to his family and things like that, you know, uh, just understand something. That's not me. Okay. Now this is absolutely zero criticism to any of my friends online, including, and I'm not going to say anybody's names, but including anybody who I've actually collaborated with before or not. But there are a lot of people out there who have comic book channels or whatever. And if you're just a regular, you know, bloke, a regular person on on uh, Twitter or something, and you don't have a YouTube channel or you're not promoting anything, then by all means, you say what you need to say and, you know, reminisce and, 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 and you know, look for consolence and try and console others that Chadwick Boseman died. That's important to the community. You know what I'm saying? It's important to the community to, 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 to mourn. It's important for all of the living to mourn over the dead, especially the ones that, you know, we felt some kind of a connection to very important. Well, at the same time, if you have a platform like YouTube, I think it's important to maybe say something at some point, like I'm, I planned on addressing it in this video. And I also plan on addressing it a little bit in the podcast that I'm going to do tonight uh, with Chillmonger, if he's okay to do it. Um, we'll, we'll, you know, we'll talk about it somewhat briefly, but there are people who feel the need to go on and just, you know, do this thing. It's like, I didn't black my, my face out or my profile pick out you know, for the, that, that one Tuesday for the black lives matter thing. I don't put black lives matter or BLM in my stuff because I kind of talk about it all the time. Anyway, that's the thing. There are people out there who only look for that surface stuff and I'm not here for that surface topographical stuff. You know, like I just, I really just don't care. I, 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 I don't want to be one of those people who's going to try and monetize a guy's death. If somebody feels the need to make a video about Chadwick Boseman dying and, you know, whatever, okay, feel free to do that. 
but usually in my opinion, especially if the only, if the video is only about that for the most part, to me, oftentimes that comes off as really cheesy. My wife sent me things, M mind you, my wife who's black, you know what I'm saying? She sent me some pictures and some things. She's like, I want to help you make a video about Chadwick Proposal. I'll, I'll make the video with you and things like that. Like, you should definitely say something because, like, you're a community leader in the thing. I was like, community leader? I'm a jackass on YouTube who talks about comics. You know what I'm saying? And sometimes people care. Sometimes people don't. Like, what does that mean? I'm a community leader. No, I'm not. I'm a guy who goes on YouTube and talks about his love of comic books with other people who also love comic books. That's it. It's a very specific niche. You know what I'm saying? So Chadwick Boseman died. I never met him. I never knew him. I never even got the chance to shake his hand or something like that. And it pains me, but it is what it is. What am I going to talk about? What are we going to talk about? Like, it, to me, it just feels like a way of monetizing things and trying to score brownie points with people. F brownie points. You know what I'm saying? No, that's just not who I am. That's not who I am. Uh, if you're new to the channel, I love the Black Panther. The comic books, I go and check out me talking about the Black Panther in multiple videos. I probably know more about the Black Panther than most other people know about the Black Panther because of what I've read in comic books and interviews that I've had with people, creators, uh, people who've written the character, you know what I'm saying? Like I've had people who've drawn the character. Like I've gone into extensive detail talking to these people about Captain America and Black Panther specifically, as far as um, Marvel, the Marvel side of things are concerned. You're saying these, these are just two of my absolute favorite characters. I will go toe to toe with anybody in my knowledge about the character, the Black Panther. And I talked up that movie to people who were just hating on the movie. Like I loved it. Go back and look at those things to understand my love for the character and for the for the the actor who played him, Chadwick Boseman. I don't feel the need to also do like a little tagline or like, you know, oh, best wishes, blah, 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 come and watch my channel. That's not who I am. That's not who I am. Breaks my heart. Breaks my heart. But I'm, but like, it's a genuine, it hurts that he's gone. And I hope that his family is okay. And I have to believe that he is in a much, much better place. But I'm not going to try and make money off of this guy's death. Like that's, nah, they're, there are plenty of other people <laughs> who could do that. Um, history, what's up? Yeah, uh, it keeps on bouncing. Like on me, I'm seeing all the people who are in. They, they bounce in, they bounce out, and whatever. And it's like it's 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 kind of a weird thing. There are people here. It's uh, you're here. Uh, Girl talk just said she's still here. So anyway, um, yeah, yes, I I see you, history. <laughs> I see you. Um, I don't know specifically who you are. Oh, it's Corey. What's up, Cor? How you doing? Okay, so let's talk about some um, review. Let's do some comic book reviews first, and then I'll then I'll start doing some chat stuff while I'm opening up some of these toys that I got. All right. So first, Mars Attacks, Red Sonia. Great name. Pretty fun comic book. I'm not going to be reading any of the other ones, though. Uh, this is, boom, this is Dynamite Comics. Dynamite is going to be doing this new thing. Let's see if I can find it. You know, I'll find it later. For now, um, the writer is John Lehman, who also did Chew. I, I met and interviewed the hell out of him. I don't think I ever posted that interview. I have to post that <laughs> one of these days. I covered one of his panels and had good conversation with the guy, you know? Like, it just, it is what it is. But yeah. Um, anyway. John Lehman, uh, the artist is Frank uh, Sturkin and uh, Valentinia Brisky did the colors and Taylor Esposito did the letters. Uh, gotta gotta talk to Taylor Esposito one of these days. Um, love I love what what he does with the the letters in his pages. Anyway, so this was a fun comic book. Uh, Y'all know Mars Attacks, I think that silly movie where they just show up and they're just back 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 and they just start you know shooting people and they all. The, the, the alien, let me show you what the aliens look like a little bit closer. These things, the, the, the weird, freaky looking skeleton looking things, just, you know, it's a funny movie. It's a hysterical movie with like everybody is in that movie. Like every celebrity during the time was in that movie and most of them got killed. <laughs> it was like such a silly, great, silly movie. 
Um, I only saw it once. I, I might actually wind up watching it again. But anyway, it was a pretty good comic book. It was interesting seeing the way that they connect, you know, the, the dots and whatnot. It's going to be interesting seeing sword and sorcery, mostly just sword, versus high-tech future, you know, disintegration rays. It'll be interesting. Anyway, um, Dynamite is going to be doing die Namite. So they're going to be cashing in on the zombie thing that Marvel and DC have been doing. Well, Marvel's been doing it pretty much forever. DC just started doing it with Deceased. So they're going to be doing Die Namite. So all of their characters are going to be... You know, Vampirella should be a really fun one because she's technically already undead, right? So these could be fun. <laughs> these could be fun. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing them. This was a fun comic book. I'm not going to be getting any more of the issues because it just doesn't interest me. But it was fun seeing that uh, that connection. I Wolverine 2020 issue number two. This was, it's Larry Hama. I mean, the, like he made G.I. Joe. And when I say that, I'm not exaggerating. He really made G.I. Joe. All the people who did the figures and whatnot. Yeah, 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 yeah. He took them and he did all the profiles for these guys. You know, the, the profiles with the stats and things like that. That was him. That was his idea. He did that not even realizing that would be a good idea to do. And he showed people like, we should do this on the back of all the toys. And boom, like that was him. The guy who did that silent issue that I just got finished reviewing not too long ago. Yeah, all sorts of cool stuff like that. Anyway, so Larry Hama is the writer. Artist Roland Bashi. Colors uh, Andreas Mosa. VCs Joe Sabino does the letters. Um, Juan Jose Ripe and... Uh, Jesus Abertov does the cover, and there's a variant cover by Daniel Warren Johnson and Mike Spicer. Daniel Warren Johnson, who just did the um, Murder Falcon not too long ago, and Wonder Woman Dead Earth. So there's that. Anyway, uh, this was boring. This, there was a lot of action in this, but there was absolutely zero story. Like, good luck finding a single shred of story in here. Even the way it ends, it doesn't really end. It doesn't really end. It's like, yeah, we decided to stop fighting. <laughs> it was it was not a bad issue. If you're looking for action, you'll find plenty of it in there. But yeah, for the most part, <laughs> not really. Okay. Empire, Captain America, issue number three. Um first let me let me go over who actually made the comic book. Philip Kennedy Johnson, who I've been praising is the writer for this. For the previous two issues, they were amazing. Uh, Ariel Olivetti doing the art, color art by Rachel Rosenberg, letters VCs Ariana Maher, and uh, Mike Henderson and Nolan Warder does the main cover, and there's a, a Butch Juice and Frank D'Armada variant cover. Carlos Lau doing the graphic design. So, uh, And of course, uh, Jack Kirby and um, Joe Simon created Captain America. So anyway, uh, this was okay. This was okay. It really just continued with what it was supposed to do. There were two things that really bothered me about this comic book because there was a good, good amount of action and the story, it continued pretty much like it did before, but there was obviously nothing to build. It was all about wrapping it up. So did it stick the ending? It didn't, but it wasn't the book's fault. It wasn't the book's fault that they weren't able to stick the ending because the way that the ending worked was uh, go read the rest of what happens from this point on in... Uh, Empire issue number six. I'm just going to try and show you that one part. To be continued in Empire issue number six. Man, I'm reading side issues and hoping that they're going to actually come into play and actually be a little bit important. And I resound myself to the idea that this probably was not going to be a good uh, side issue, ancillary issues, yet it proved to be really good. But then the ending for it to just... Eh, go read the rest in Empire issue number six, which everybody should be reading anyway, right? Eh, no, that was not cool. That was not cool. The problem is most of the stories did that. In fact, I, Wolverine, issue number two of two, actually said to be concluded in, um, well, well, to be concluded in the, the pages of uh, Iron Man 2020, issue number six of six, which I just reviewed today. But the... Um, what is it? This one, here's what gets really funny about it. Empire Avengers issue three of three, one, didn't really have Black Knight in it to begin with. Like, not really, even though he's on the cover and it's an awesome looking cover. But more than that, it says to be continued in Empire issue number five of six. Wait, what? Well, why is it coming out already? Because issue six is coming out next week. It's coming out in a couple of days. What's going on? So, like, that was just booty. 
that bothered me. So I'm not even going to open this one. This was uh, Jim Zub and um, Carlos Man. I can't remember Magno's name. Um, Brenda Jern is in there, Sven or something like that. I don't know. Anyway, um, no disrespect. It just um, that that wasn't a good book. That one really that that was just a soft book for me. Uh, this one. Philip Kennedy Johnson really did a freaking fantastic job in here. The art was okay. The art has been pretty okay, upper as opposed to lower okay. It's been pretty okay for a while, you know what I'm saying? But the writing has just been fantastic. Um, I said there were two problems with this book. One was the way it continued. The second problem was actually obviously earlier than that. Um, the speech that that uh, Steve, um, uh, Steve Rogers, Captain America, gave in this. Um, plagiarize speeches if you need to, but if you're not good at writing speeches, don't write speeches. Let's go get them. Really? Let's go get them. Whatever the hell he said, like it wasn't a very good speech. If you're going to have Captain America doing a rallying cry, following a speech, one, make the speech good. And this one just, it was so basic. I'm like, ah, ah. <laughs> you need a speech writer. If you're going to do that, like go back and look at some of the things that Patton used to say, you know, say, look at the things that Eisenhower used to say, like something like that. Don't, don't just make something up. That's going to suck. <laughs> Finally, daredevil, uh, annual 2020. This was a pretty good book. This only has daredevil in it for like one panel though. Instead, it actually has daredevil's mystically created twin brother. <laughs> I have Mike uh, Murdoch. So instead of Matt Murdoch, it's got Mike Murdoch. That's an old story that we've seen before. And Charles Soule, I think, was the writer who brought him back. Yes, it was, because he loves the Inhumans. Uh, Charles Soule brought him back and did a bunch of things with him. And basically, he asks the Hood. Uh, he says, hey, man, I want you to you know, hook me up. And I want you to, or, no, no, he, he's working with the, the hood because he's got uh, access to mystical items. And there's the, one of the Norn stones. So he's able to get that Norn stone back from the Norns of uh, Norse mythology. And he's able to, I think this one was from Carnilla. Anyway, he, but they didn't say it. I'm just, I'm trying to remember. Anyway, so he gets his hands on this uh, Norn stone in a very sneaky way, which I dig. I like that. And uh, he goes and he says, I wish for a past because he doesn't really have a past. He's got an artificial past. So he wanted a real past, uh, past. So now with this, he's actually got a real history. While his brother, Matt, was blinded and wound up becoming a lawyer, um, Mike didn't have anything special happen to him. So no specific tragedy, just he grew up poor in Hell's Kitchen to a boxer father who you know took dives for a living for the mob and also roughed people up for the mob um instead he learned how to fight and he learned how to fight from his dad and he learned how to resent his dad and he just learned how to pretty much be a bad kid which is not too different from what he already is so it's funny that his past really became his present yo chill out with that so uh his past really kind of came to become his present which was actually fairly interesting. I'm not complaining about that at all. That was actually a pretty good uh, comic book all in all. I don't really need him to come back. Like I really just didn't need um, Mike Murdoch to come back. But if Chip Zardowski is going to bring him back and give him a history and make him a real boy, like this was basically his Pinocchio moment, you know? Okay, let's see what he's going to do because I usually don't dislike things that he does so let's see what's up okay let me start checking out the comments as i'm opening toys let's start with iron man 2020 an eb games exclusive so let's see suan says uh this just shows us how short our time is with each other agreed we have to cherish one another and be wary of words of harm I agree with your wife, though. I think she is encouraging you to do a video because she values your voice. Plus, I understand your perspective. Yeah, I like I said, I'm just not interested in monetizing somebody's death. That is um, genuinely like it's to me. It's just a very disgusting thing to do. Um, if other people are going to do it, I'm not begrudging anybody for it. I do still think it's disgusting. I don't think that they're necessarily disgusting. I literally just look at it as I think that it's a dirty thing to do. And they may have good intentions for doing it, but I can't for myself bring myself to 
yeah, no, to justify doing that video. But everybody's their own person, and everybody has the right to do what they think is best, how they want to grieve or mourn. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but for me, I, I personally don't find anything honorable in that. Therefore, I won't do it while not speaking out against anybody. Um, let's pop open these uh, extra fists before I start reading some more comments. Uh, what do you got there? Open up there, tough guy. There we go. You thought you were going to beat me? Ah! You cannot defeat me. So we're just finishing... Well, we just finished up this week with the Iron Man 2020 storyline, story arc, and the end of Dan Slott's run. It was a weird way to end it. It's a very slot way to end things. Uh, I don't have a problem with the way that it ended. I just don't think that it was like the most creative way to end <laughs> a story. But you know what? It is what it is. So freaking whatever. Anyway, here's the back of the thing if you're interested. And here is the front. So we've got, boom, these parts do not rotate. I already knew that because I asked somebody. But it's cool. It does go all the way around. So I like that. Uh, over here, he's got a buzz saw that does not rotate. And over here, he's got uh, a very similar buzz saw as to the ones up here that d does not rotate. That's a little disappointing, but it is a full belt that does move around and it can come off if you decide to clip it, but there's no actual part to remove it. Whatever. Why would you want to remove it anyway, right? So anyway, um, does this front part come off? Okay, the front part is actually attached, but the rest of the stuff is not fully attached. So all this can come off. I don't know why you'd want to do that. But anyway, you know, the typical rotation. So he's got his hands so that he can uh, fire repulsor blasts. These do not bend forward, which is very disheartening to me. Like they're stuck like this in repulsor mode or, you know, push them out and then flight mode. You can do that if you need to, but you wouldn't want to. You'd want to be like this. And then, of course, he's got the um, uh, these things. So you can put these inside here and here. Come on. You can do it. And then you could put these guys here and here. Did these come off? I think that they do. They might but they might not go back on no nope, they will come off okay so you can just make this a regular sh you know shot as opposed to a blast but anyway so he can do his full flight mode and he actually comes with these two things let me turn them around so they're actually facing you hmm you can actually put them inside so he can actually stand hey and, ah, and there he goes. <laughs> so anyway, it's supposed to be like this, and you put his feet, put one foot on there, and he's got the other one. So that can happen. Let me pick these up before Bagel goes and snatches them, uh, or wind up running over them. Uh, so he's got those, and he also comes with two fists. So bang, Iron Man 2020. How you doing? Okay, heard a lot of great things about Red Sonja, but I don't know where to start reading her. Uh, Conan, issue number 23, from back in 1983, I think it was. <laughs> that was her first uh, appearance. Because the, the first true appearance of her, well, reading of her, was a very different character. She was originally created by Robert E. Howard to be a, like, 100 years ago, like, 100 years ago would have been modern era a uh, Russian woman who was ridiculously tough, used to run around with pistols and... She was basically Red Sonja, but with pistols. So it was Marvel that actually redesigned her. So Roy Thomas, who redesigned her and was like, no, 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 she's actually going to be this instead. And we're going to give her a chainmail bikini. So, um, so Conan issue number 23 is actually the first true appearance of the Red Sonja that we know of today. <laughs> so there's that. Uh, aside from that, eh. Just, you know, stuff like that. And you can usually read that stuff for, you know, on your subscription with uh, the Marvel app or or whatever. Um, bo -bo -bo -bo. Everyone and their sisters are jumping on the zombie bandwagon, right? 
speaking of Black Panther stuff, anyone in the know where were there any other Black Panther tenures between Coates, Hudlin, and Priest? Uh, just the ones that we saw. Uh, Hudlin's going to be doing Static Shock pretty soon. Static I don't feel like bringing him down because he's on his... Uh, I'll bring him down anyway just to show off. Come on. Static Shock. Son of a gun. <laughs> so, Static on his lightning... <laughs> sewer manhole cover boom and he's got his Malcolm X head in the background <laughs> love this character man absolutely love that character and he's like so short too he's not super huge like all the other freaking characters I'm just going to lay him down for now because yeah anyway um, aggressively relaxing what's up dude <sighs> did not get the mystery stuff uh, Daredevil annual surprised me greatly. Yeah, it wasn't bad. Comic from my professor. Thoughts on three jokers. I was eating dinner for the past 20 minutes. Sorry if you already discussed this. No, I didn't. I, um, I did my own video on it. It was actually the first video that I put up after the, this week in comics. Loved it. I thought it was great. Wasn't the best comic book I read this week though. Surprisingly, very surprisingly. Uh, Mac relaxing. Let's see. Slots one was incredible. The cat's uh, the cat story and badass Herbie. Herbie. Okay, that was actually a really good version of Herbie. He pretty much just made him like um, what's his name though with the meat sack, the meat bag comments. Um, Machine Man from the and that was who did the the what the hell was that called? Next or something like that. Anyway, um, that was Garth Ennis, I believe. So Butterfingers, yeah, bite me. <laughs> uh, man, one event from Marvel down and many more to go. Speaking of subscribing, how do we subscribe to you, giving you money through Twitch? I don't know if I'm actually set up to receive money through Twitch. I honestly don't know. Let me um, see my spell. Um, how do you use? Here's for notifications. Uh, there are bits. I don't know if you're able to send me bits. No, you know what? I have to actually set it up because yeah, I don't have it set up so that you can actually donate to me here. I just want to make sure that I can actually do this. So there's that. <clears throat> Wasn't the most important thing in my mind. I just want to try and get out there a little bit more. So yeah, I'll, I'll try and fix that for next week, but yeah, you're already a patron. Calm down. Um, Professor, can we get a top five books of the week? My top five would be Batgirl, Action Comics, Detective Comics, Amazing Spider-Man, and Jokers, uh, Three Jokers. Uh, I don't do top fives, but I will say my second was Three Jokers, and my top was um, Marauders, issue three. I just thought that was unbelievably amazing. Like It really brought – both books brought in a lot of history. And that's – like I'm at that age where I feel like I don't want to be I – don't, I don't need and I definitely don't want to be well I, I definitely don't need but i don't i don't have the, the 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 want to be catered to i'm okay if you cater to me you know to to the stories i used to read back in the day but i don't need it you know uh and it's not even like a desire particularly but i do look at it as when you do bring up the history of the characters even back before i was reading you know before i was you know in the reading era of comics like in the 60s before i was alive when i was just you know swimming so to speak eh. um i love when people do that when you show your knowledge of the character's history it makes it easier to accept the changes that you're going to make to the character inevitably you know so it helps to know it's like well the guy made changes I'm not, you know, particularly happy with but look at some of the other stuff that he's you know he recognizes these things so at least there's that. When you just change the Gatati, it's like, I know that Slot has read these books. I know that um, uh, Ewing has read these books, but man, they, horrible, horrible, horrible. But uh, peace, brother. Uh, my name isn't as cool as Tenderfoot. Oh, <laughs> Tenderfoot69. So uh, Krom mocks you. <laughs> Crom Moxer. I didn't even realize that at first. So that's uh, Rich Silva, the Silva Surfer right there. So <laughs> Crom Moxer, I was talking to him on Facebook 
And he's like, yeah, I made a, I made a name. It's like, is it Tenderfoot 69 <laughs> or something to that effect? Um, the final stream. Does it really say the final stream? My, my thing says the final stream. Oh, for crying out loud. I got to, I got to fix that. <laughs> the last one said that too, but it was supposed to. Um, I just copy and paste. I didn't realize that it said the final live stream. I wonder if I can edit that right now. Let's see if I can edit that right now. Whoop. And. Boop. Save changes. Okay, so that should change it. At some point, that should change it. Anyway, in the repeat, it'll 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 change it. So um, what do we got here? This is kind of weird. Whenever I heard about three jokers, I always imagined Caesar Romero's joke, right? And Heath Ledger's. I was kind of imagining that too, but no, I'm glad they went with the comic book instead of the movies. Like the movies are always great, but I mean, like, come on, you know. Okay, let me start opening my uh, first and possibly last ever pop. And like I said, unless I could find a Cthulhu pop, which I, th I heard that they made, but I've never actually seen it. But um, I'm going to open the only pop I've ever bought in my life, Stan Lee. And this is Stan Lee from Iron Man in his Hugh Hefner smoking jacket kind of thing. It's the most Stan Lee looking character that I found. Oh, it's already open. Oh, I get it. I, I got, I bought this at Toys R Us and I guess that people, there was these two guys who were opening them and they were looking for like the best looking one. So I guess that somebody opened this and forgot to put it in the proper way because his feet were out of here, not like back in there. I don't really care. I don't need this thing to be perfect. But anyway, glasses don't come off. So there we go. Stan the Manly. Oh wait. Sounds like Woody Woodpecker. So boom, Stan Lee. Ha <laughs> ha. Ah, there we go. So I'm putting him right over here. Hope that he stands okay. Can you see? It? You can see him. He's right between Devastator's leg. <laughs> I, okay. So there's that. And uh, anyway, okay. So let's let's start opening. Let's just open these guys. Get them out of the way really quick, so I can start opening some of the really cool stuff that I already showed you guys. So what do we got here? Breck! Breck Warren is here. What's up, Breck? Uh, nice. That's cool. I need to get one of those. Yeah, it's available in Toys R Us now for 15 bucks Canadian, so it's probably only like 10 or 12 US. Uh, it wasn't one of the more expensive ones. Okay. So, like I said, I've already got the Sif. I'm not going to get upset over having an extra Sif figure because I can always do things with the uh, body mold and with the head, especially uh, I can do a whole bunch of cool things like um, swap the head. Uh, maybe give her like a, uh, a gown or something like a formal, even not evening wear a formal gown and stuff like that stuff that Sif would usually never be caught dead doing, but Odin may have given an edict. So never know. Anyway, boom, for like, you know, for Thor's coronation, she should, she should totally be dressed up at least a little bit, like shine her sword or something, you know? Okay, close that up, put that over there, and crack boom Okay, so Thor, nice, short, sweet, simple. He's got his hammer, the mallet. <clears throat> He's going to uh, hold it in his hand. And it is a ceremony. I'm probably going to modify this one. Probably going to modify this one. Like, it's not going to be that hard. And just make the, the thing. Actually, I don't know if I've got one where it, it, it looks like it's flying. But I want one that's actually going to, like, hang from his belt. Which means i got to make that modification also. Either way, this is the ceremonial coronation armor that he wears. It just looks amazing. So when I'm doing my recreations, bang, that's what he's going to look like. As far as the lady Sif is concerned, she has got her, she, well, she's, it's her, uh, Jamie Alexander is who played her. Um, boom. Got this nice buckler shield. Put that on her arm. Uh, like she had from the, uh, agents of shield those two episodes that she was in. Yeah. They should have just freaking made her a, a regular reoccurring character, not just like reoccurring one more time. She should have been a regular character on there. I think that would have just been great. Like pay this woman 
freaking get her on the damn show. That would have just been awesome. And that one doesn't seem to want to go in. I think they both go in, though. Uh, there we go. So she's got this where she can connect the two swords together. And then she's got one extra sword right here. That's just going to go into her hand right now. Go and put this in the uh, storage. She can obviously use it for two-handed also if she wants. But then she's also got this one. She's got the buckler. So bang. And there's no place to put this, which is a little bit frustrating. I'd like to make like a little hook or something that will hold these also. Because, you know, these do separate. Anyway. So bang. There's that. Now. Get some more. Let's hear it. Um, Ouch, my nose is killing me. Uh, it's cool. Need to get one of those. Uh, R.I.P. Chadwick Boseman. Yeah, I talked about that. Uh, man, I swear those Funko Pops are getting more expensive each year. Really? That's 15 bucks Canadian is expensive? I see some of the slightly older ones for like 30 I'm like, I don't know how people are doing that, man. Like, that's what I pay for a single figure, you know, a single regular size figure. Uh, we lost a real one. Uh, where is everybody uh, around around plus it's the first time me being on Twitch. So, uh, they are also getting cuter too. So that's way. Okay. <laughs> um, but the bit, the bit, the bit, the bit, man, I hope the ending of empire's event is better than Iron Man 2020. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not going to disagree with you on there. Amazing Spider-Man 850 next week is going to be $9. Yeah, I know. At least not 10. I mean, there's that. But yeah, uh, it's better be worth it since one week after DC is going to get me to fork over nine bucks for Detective Comics 1027. Oh man, I hear this issue is going to be good. Hugs, <laughs> Hugs Rich. Uh, okay, so now let me open up. Bang. Got the Red Hulk. I finally freaking found this in a Toys R Us. Finally found it. I I kept on finding the Venom. Oh, I moved the Venom. No, I didn't. He's right there. He's right there next to the hammer. Boom. He's right there. So I, I found that Venom a while ago. That was actually a fairly easy find. As soon as, you know, Toys R Us and all this stuff opened up again, uh, the physical locations, I walked in the store. I was like, there's Venom. But I couldn't find this. So I just found this uh, a couple days ago. And I walked in the store and they had like six of them. I was like, yes. Yes, finally. So <clears throat> I've also got the previous one that I think that it was actually a builder figure. Anyway, here, let me open this thing up first. Actually show you all what's up. So as you can expect, this thing is effing huge. My God, man. My word. They got to make a Thaddeus Thunderbolt Ross figure. You know what I'm saying? Because I like to have the human versions of the alter ego characters too. So here he is. One hand open, one hand closed. But they've also got the reversed hand. So there's a, this hand open that I can put on there. Or a, this hand closed and a fist that I can put on there. So still very cool. You can see, look at the size of the wings on there. Like this thing straight up. He can bring his arms back and just do that. <clears throat> you know, that freaking, like, look at that. Like, that's just not even normal. Nobody needs to bring him back that far, you know, back here. But in comic books, when you have that, you know, that scene where he's just, you know, coming right at you it looks good like this because that's what, how we're used to seeing them drawn you know but like when you look at it with physics if like randy orton who dislocates his freaking shoulder blades like he can't bring his shoulders back that damn far you know what I'm saying but here it looks good doesn't it it's just great to see the difference between regular physics and or uh kinesthetics something along those lines um my my youngest sister-in-law is actually going to school for for that where it's like you can go into physiotherapy or go for your medical degree which she's apparently going for her medical degree proud of the idiot <laughs> um boom he's got look at his 
chest articulation, his his torso, his ab crunch. So not great there, but whatever it is, what it is. But here, boom, not bad at all. So I mean, let me put his feet forward for you, so you can actually like you know lean back pretty far. Uh, full rotate. Oh. You hear that? Ah, oh, man, the grinding of the gears. I freaking love it. And of course, it, it it turns at the waist and turns a little bit more under the uh, thorax or above the thorax, whatever, like middle of the thorax. Uh, double leg joints here brings his foot back a full 90 degrees. That's fine. That's perfectly fine. Uh, so he can get ready to he, he, This is as far back as he'll bring his leg. So it doesn't go back at all. You could turn it to the side and make it look like it goes back. But when you look at it from the front, you see I'm actually kipping it out a little bit. So there's that. But if it's fully straight, it doesn't go back at all. Uh, but it does go forward. So there's that. Uh, when you put it forward, he's going to do like a, a thrust kick or something like that. Um, you see, when he's fully standing, he's not going to, he, he's really just kind of kneeing a little bit. So you got to bring him back. Damn it. That is hard. And this is the best. You're gonna, it looks good enough. You know, boom, you like bring his hands up. I actually do it from this side, I guess. And, you know, but actually here, it looks like he's falling. So I guess here would be better. So, you know, boom, give a kick to the chest of some smaller guy, like in, um, uh, the Incredible Hulk movie. Yeah. Okay. And now I'm going to do a comparison because here's the original Hulk that I had. I believe this was a, um, a, uh, build a figure. So I'm going to show you the size difference between these two. I, I love this figure. I have zero problems with this figure. You know what I'm saying? But this one, he is noticeably bigger. Like, let me, there you go. The feet are at the same height. He is noticeably a lot bigger, like a full head taller than the other one. His musculature, I mean, just comes out of the shoulders more. I mean, he's a huge, ridiculously huge character. So that's awesome. Uh, zero complaints. So I still like this one. Love this one. Wow. Um, I like having two different facial features. And plus, if I'm going to be doing these in like a stop motion or in a articulated comic book art, um, I can just start with this one. And then when he gets Superman and starts absorbing more radiation, boom. Actually, not radi what is he absorbing? Crap, I forget. No, just the more the angrier he gets, the uh, the more energy, the more radiation he releases. He can actually overload. Yeah, boom. So I'll just you know have him boom like that, get bigger all of a sudden. So eh, zero complaints about that. That is a gorgeous figure. That is a freaking hot figure right there. So zero complaints for me. And the final thing to open. Bang! So these are the Earthrise ones, um, Thundercracker and Skywarp that actually turn into the Jets. I'm not going to be transforming them here, but I will open these up. So these just went on the shelves here in Canada like last week, last week or two weeks ago, but I missed the first wave. Uh, so all of a sudden I see them again behind the counter actually. Cause like I came specifically for this. I know when the truck comes from my local store and I went and they were just like, you know, eh, 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 I don't know what you're talking about. And I was like, wait a second. Is that them? There were like six or eight of them. I think there were like eight of them behind the counter. I was like, wait a second. Is that them right there? That's them right there. They're behind the counter, like behind the customer service booth. And like, Oh, these, like, yeah, freaking those. Like, is there a street date in those? Or can I buy one right now? Like debit card. Hook me up. Well, you have to take it over there. I'll take it over there. Can, 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 can I buy it now? Can, that's exactly what I came in for. Can I go buy that now? Like, yeah, sure. Go buy it now. It's like, mother fat heads. Man, that's frustrating. Anyway, you can kind of see the uh, background art. I don't really feel like taking the thing out. You can see you. You can see you guys talking there. Uh, but aside from that, yeah, the background art's kind of cool. It's kind of cool. I'm going to save this. I'm going to save this. Um, plastic because I've actually bought some of the plastic before and I realized that was kind of dumb because I already get this plastic for free to make windows. Yeah. To do my dioramas, I don't need to buy that's And it's expensive too. It's like $10 per sheet. And I'm like, 
I, I I don't know what it was. I just suddenly realized when I was buying this the one day, I'm like, why did why have I been buying that stuff to make my windows when I could just use the fr the stuff that I'm already buying anyway with a figure? So yeah, really stupid on my part. Anyway, this is what I'm going to use now to make windows for my dioramas. Because why the hell wouldn't I? So anyway, bang that is a thing. Oh, so I guess you can actually see the uh, the inside of the box a little bit better now. Hey, there you go. So there's that. I don't feel the need to save it. Oh, I do need to go into the back. Don't forget in the back of these, there's not just the uh, don't eat the box instructions. There's also the how to transform these guys instructions. So that's always inside. The the insert is always inside the, uh, the insert there. So anyway, yeah, so saving this. Hi, it's me. And uh, boom, putting that right there. Pop this guy off. Pop that guy off. Oh, not bad. So there's the, the little bit of plastic just over the legs. And then after that, it should just slide. Well, I mean, they're actually in the plastic. They're, they're molded in the plastic. They clearly take a hair dryer or something like that to get it to actually stay inside. Oh, yeah, but when you lift it here, let me actually try it again with this guy. So just, you know, hold it at the waist, pull this back a little bit. Pretty much slides out without too much of a hassle. Oh, and they've got the uh, 3D thing on the side if you want, because then it, not 3D, the infrared, so you can actually, hold on, I'll show you once I get this darn thing out. Well, the other one came out a lot easier than this one. Skywarp should have just teleported out. I mean, psh, do we not know our Transformers? Put that back in there. So anyway, the, um, yeah, the... So if you go to, they'll have it on here somewhere. I don't remember what it is. I went and it's like, whatever. They have the um, the the website for the Transformers War, uh, War of Cybertron stuff. It's like one of the Hasbro sub websites or whatever. There we go. And uh, right here on, like when you're looking at this thing, you know, there's this little box, uh, this little part that's kind of angled out. Uh, if you look really carefully, you might be able to see that there is some writing on there, on some of them. I don't know if there is on this one or not. Uh, there is not, so that doesn't help. But anyway, it's actually good for a blacklight. If you have a blacklight, you can read it super easy. Otherwise, you can just angle it in the light just right and see the little whatevers on the side. And what it is, is it'll give you a code in Cybertronian. So once again, another stupid cipher. And then you follow the cipher on the website and they'll show you, hey, here's this. So you got to look at the, the individual letters of the cipher and then find it on there and then translate it to a regular English and then type in one letter. And then you keep on doing all this or one number, one code. It's letters and numbers, an alphanumeric system. Uh, type in the code on the, on the uh, website and I'll say, oh, Here's, you know, 26 things that you can unlock. You just unlocked one of them. And then boom, like that with that figure, you'll unlock this thing. So it'll uh, actually show you the next thing similar to this that's coming out pretty soon. Uh, case in point, I think that with this, this, I know with the Soundwave one that gave me access to, to an early version or an early viewing of the transformation of the, the Voyager class Optimus Prime, which, yeah, whatever. It was cool. So you get to see a, a preview of the new stuff that's coming out. Uh, and it, it, it takes your login information, so it actually saves all of your, your stuff so you can see all the stuff that you've already unlocked or haven't. Anyway, so this is it. It just comes with the two figures and, you know, the, the gun attachments on the side. Uh, like I said, I already have a Thundercracker, but he's the one that transforms into the, um, the Cybertronian ship. Uh, this is the Earth. That was the Cybertronian, uh, the, the um, uh, War for Cybertron Siege line. The Siege line, everybody transforms into their Cybertronian transformations. And I think we, you know, most of us Transformers fans, we know that when they came to Earth, uh, Anti in the comic books, but Teletron One in the the cartoon, um, uh, 
change them so they would transform into earthly shapes, what they thought was the dominant life forms there. So this is the Earth Siege one. The Earth Siege one transforms into the actual earthen ship. So this will change into an Earth style jet. You know what I'm saying? And then Sky Warp. They they made a Sky Warp for Siege, but it was a like a four pack or a five pack. It came with two little guns, two little like target masters, the stupid little transformers that you you fold them over and they transform into a gun. Some of them a double barrel gun. It's like that's stupid. And then another one that like turns into a ramp or stupid stuff that I don't care about. One transforms into a hammer. Stupid stuff. And it's all it's just a way of them raising the price by 20 bucks. And one, I I didn't really want to pay an extra 20 bucks for these other figures that I wasn't interested in. 30 bucks Canadian is, is I think more than enough to pay for one of these. Uh, but what's more is that um uh, it was, I, I could never actually find the figure. I mean, I saw it on Amazon, but I hate ordering from Amazon because they're always canceling your stuff. They're always canceling your stuff. So I was like, you know, if I don't find it in the, in the actual, we always call it in the wild. If we don't find it in the wild, then, you know, F it, then I just won't get it, I guess. But they wound up making a different one, a guy named Hot Link or something like that. And I showed you guys this before. And it's the, it basically looks exactly, it's the same colors for the most part, but they're calling him something else. So, and he transforms into the, the, the siege version, the Cybertronian ship. And this is the regular sky warp that the actual sky warp that changes into the earth shape. So, Hey, I went like, literally it's a win, win, win situation. And this didn't cost any extra. It was 60 bucks Canadian. So the price for two figures and it's great they're just using the same exact mold as uh starscream uh they don't have the the wry smiles though they just have uh this one his mouth is closed it's i don't know if you can see it or not it's just you know he's like that this one his mouth is open like he's yelling you can definitely see it a little bit there so you can see the difference in the two so they've got different facial expressions cool i love it i absolutely love it so yeah, these are totally freaking awesome. I love Thundercracker. Like when he opens up his, it's just such a great, you know, unique pet. Like obviously Skywarp is probably the toughest of them all. Uh, Starscream has his cluster bombs and his uh, something, some special kind of laser that he does, which who cares? He's also got a screeching voice. Skywarp teleports. I mean, short, it's short, you know, distance teleportation, but he teleports. I mean, that's freaking amazing. Thundercracker. He just opens up his exhaust jets and makes this sonic boom kind of sound, which is just amazing. It's not even just ear piercing, you know, like a, you know, whatever. It's, it's like, it's actually, you know, boom. So I love it. I love, like, it's just a great idea that if he's flying too close to you and he opens up those exhausts, like he stuns everybody in the battlefield, you know, ah, my audio receptors are overloading. It's such, man. And that was a uh, Bob Budiansky who came up with that stuff. Such great ideas to individualize each one of these transformers. Every single one had their own special something going for them. You know, like Budiansky deserves, like there's some people, these comic book guys, they don't get enough praise and yeah. So anyway, so I'm here to praise them. Uh, let's read a little bit more and then I'll talk a little more. Um, man, I start, uh, I'm starting to dig the Twitch interface. Oh, nice. Nice, good, because uh, I I watch a couple of uh, live streams, like Dream. I don't know if anybody watches Minecraft, uh, the guy Dream. He does these things where it's like he will run. From, at first it was, um, my friend is going to try and I'm, I have to try and kill the Ender Dragon, and my friend is going to try and kill me. Uh, he can die multiple times, but if I die even once, then I lose. And then when he got really good at that, he started having two of his friends coming after him. Now he's been doing it with three friends and he's been doing that a couple of times. And now he's talking about, I'm going to try and see if I can get four friends to come after me. Um, <laughs> it's freaking amazing. Really good content. He's a speed runner and he's, he's beating the game. Beating the game means you kill the ender dragon. He's beaten the game three times. Uh, he, he, excuse me. He's gotten the world. He holds the, the three world records for it. And it's like, that's just amazing, you know, as a speed runner. And he's obviously good at, combat and running in his you know the minecraft parkour as they call it just absolutely amazing he's got a great voice and everything um he's one of those guys you watch him play and you're like okay i need to play some minecraft now <laughs> you know what i'm saying uh but anyway yeah i watch him on here so often i watch a couple of like, i watch wellen when he does a bunch of his stuff and 
and uh, Vertigo. I like Vertigo on here also. And I also watch uh, Ernie, the uh, Blurred Without Fear. I watch him every sort of whenever I see him uh, coming on. He's usually really late at night, though, where that's when I'm actually working because it's a little quieter around here. Anyway, uh, seeing your figures makes me want that pretty Storm Barbie again. That's it. I'm getting it. Head desk. <laughs> she just, she just uh, calm down there. Don't do any face rolls, all right? And uh, I know you play World of Warcraft, so I know that you know what a face roll is. Uh, that's freaking hysterical. Uh, he's got to be huge. He knocked out the watch. Oh, yeah, which was just such a silly thing. God, I hated that. Uh, I'll see you later. Thanks for answering my Black Panther question, Bill. Hey, no worries. Going to the Discord neighborhood. All right. We'll probably see you there. I got to do some work tonight on that computer. So we'll see what's up. The Killer Croc story in Detective Comics looked like a worthless side story, but it ended up being really good. Exactly, Comic Ramon. Exactly. It did wind up being really good. Yeah, you should have known better than to doubt Tomasi. Shame on you. <laughs> but I thought the same thing. I'm like, this is probably going to be dumb, isn't it? No, it was actually really good it was heartwarming that might be number three on my list and i'm not sure that might be number three um uh x factor number two was pretty high up there uh leia williams actually made a rape joke and it was funny <laughs> like it was it was actually funny go figure like you got to be a special kind of comedian to pull off a joke like that you know what i'm saying but it is what it is um, how many followers do you need for me to sub to you? Because I have a, I have a sub to give, uh, Twitch prime gives me one free sub a month. Oh, Hey, kind uh, of I love you, man. I don't know what I need. Honestly, I, I'm not sure what I need. So I have to <laughs> have to check it out, but, uh, I appreciate that. Thank you very much for that. Uh, comic Ramon. Um, yeah, my, I've got to use my Twitch Prime on somebody also. Jeez. Um, now, if you come to Twitch, we'll switch. Uh, I'll face roll if I want a professor. I'm a mage. <laughs> nice. Oh, geez. so sheep, sheep, sheep. It's just so sheeping everybody, right? I remember that game. Okay, I'm back. Who dared Mr. Tomasi? Right? Who dared? Uh, do a flip on the Batman. <laughs> Nice. All right. So uh, anyway, yeah, I'm going to wrap this up. And again, yeah, don't, from the things that I said before, don't be mad at somebody if they decided to do a, um, you know, like if they decided to devote a video towards talking about um, um, uh, Chadwick Boseman, his death and all that stuff. Like don't, you know, attack anybody necessarily for it. But again, like just a heads up, love the character, the Black Panther. I really liked what Chadwick Boseman was doing, but I feel like personally, I feel like it's in poor taste to try and monetize his death or anybody's death. You know what I'm saying? I, I just don't see that. It's like, to me, that's not news. You want to send out a little tweet or something like that by all means. But I don't think that that's something that you should be trying to monetize. I I really find that to be an incredibly poor taste. And, and I haven't watched anybody else's, you know, attempt to do that. Maybe they were done in really good taste. I don't know. But, like, it's to me, it's just stomach churning to see something like that. So, yeah. Anyway. Um, once we got, I worked for Clayface. You worked for Clayface? <laughs> hey! So are you mad at Batwoman also? Okay, for how long? Latest X Men issue was amazing. Love the world building. Stay strain from the dream. Uh, don't don't stray from dreams. That's not a good thing unless you find a better dream. But don't keep on chasing dreams like you're chasing waterfalls. And TLC taught us better than that, right? Anyway, guys, I got some toys to play with with my kids, and hopefully they won't break the Transformers. You know what? I'm going to play with these toys, not with those toys, with them because they might break my Transformers. But I'll talk to all you guys later. All right. <laughs> Anyway, guys, uh, thanks for showing up to the Twitch, first ever Twitch live stream for comic book stuff, and uh, talk to y'all later. Professor Bill, Comic Book University. Later, alumni. Class dismissed.